<clears throat> Excuse me, oh my goodness. Either my mic is hot. Oh, no, that's better. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello all, hello. If any of you saw our announcement in the Discord, I uh, forgot one thing we're talking about. We're, uh, we're actually gonna be showing Michael Selects for real this time. We got some good ones. Good to happen. Absolutely. First time I've been in a live stream while it's live? Oh my gosh! Pre-stream banter and you get a call out too. Look at this! Well, welcome! This should be exciting and fun. And be sure to ask questions if you have any and all that fun stuff. We try to be rather engaging in these community-centric streams. Also, Drive Live, you finally able to catch one of these as well? Oh my gosh! Bill Farson, great to see you again as well. Oh, goodness. So much love. Crispy Muffin finally able to join a stream over on Twitch. Oh my gosh, look at this. Everyone's crawling out of the woodworks today. This is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Medbed telling everyone to join the Goofy Better Twitch chat. Irony, because I read the YouTube ch uh, chat first. They got all the love and attention. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to do a quick, quick last minute thing, and then we are going to get started.
right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get started. Oh my gosh, welcome to the official Rockfish Games community stream. I am your host, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, the creators of Everspace 2. I will be guiding you through some new content today that dropped from the spring update, as well as covering some first looks for item modifiers. This is going to be for the secondaries, and uh, it's actually kind of game changing. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. There's some really cool stuff here, and it's only like six new mods, just six. That's it. There's only six of them, and we're gonna talk about every single one and why you should be as ex excited about this as I am. Words can't even form. It's, I'm like frothing at the mouth. It's, it's fantastic. I am super pumped to share these with you. Uh, we'll also be cruising through the Parasite 2 mission chain. Um, and as I mentioned in the Discord, I've actually never done this mission chain before. What? But Eric, you're like all invested in the development process. And all that stuff. Like, I know what happens. Like, I've, but I've never actually, I've never played it. My focus has been so many other places. So this is just as much my treat as it is for you. For those of you who don't want to be spoiled types of content, like um, new mission chains, like the Parasite 2, uh, it's probably going to take... 30 to 40 minutes oh gosh i hate not having an exact time um but if you want when we get started with the mission i'll tell you when we're doing it we're gonna start with missiles first but when we get started with the mission um if you wanted to back out for approximately 30 minutes uh that should be all the more it takes all right so that's enough about that um let's go ahead and get into where we left off which I actually changed the location of where I left off because I wanted to do some fun side mission stuff to show off these missiles. And uh, yeah, and away we go. So here we are, we're in uh, Union. This is not a high risk location. This is, uh, where is this? The Volta Nebula, okay, there we go, there we go. So we're in the Volta Nebula, we're right outside of the Parasite 2 mission chain. And there's a couple of things that we can do in here first. So uh, first off, let's just cover from literally left to right i actually pulled up all of the different modifiers uh there's six here these modifiers uh impact certain uh certain items more than others and some can't even be applied to other ones so let me go ahead and uh, i'm actually going to grab my cheat sheet here um ex excellent okay perfect so let's talk about some of these things first things first We've got these homing missiles here, and the modifiers are the most important thing on each one of these. We have plus 30% damage for each second the missile flies. Excellent. On average, when you're shooting at about uh, two kilometers, <coughs> excuse me, oh my gosh, the missile can fly for approximately four or five seconds, six if you're like really pushing those bounds. So that's a pretty strong damage increase. That's 30% damage for each second. And so it's like, so it doesn't go like 30% and then 30% of 30% and then 30% of 30% of 30%. No, it's like adds 30% each time. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, keeps going. So um, this already opens up some new possibilities for long distance play, which if we're being honest, doesn't get a lot of love. This is one of our first ways to crack into that. So scout players out there, I think you're gonna love this modifier for your upcoming secondaries. Next one we have. When doing critical damage with a primary weapon, there is a 30% chance to automatically fire this weapon without consuming ammo. Let's say that again. When doing critical damage with a primary weapon, there is a 30% chance just to automatically fire it without consuming ammo. So precision builds are gonna start becoming a bit more important for those proc effects. I do want to point out a very important detail of this missile, just in case there's any confusion already, because I know some people are like, oh, can I put like three of these missiles on a ship and then it automatically fires three different? No, no, you can't do that. It's whatever one is actively equipped at the time. So if you have two missiles that both had this mod, whatever missile is actively equipped will auto fire, not both of them, okay? This is a very important distinction. And I hope you all understand that. Otherwise it would be completely unbalanced. Okay, so 
Uh, very, very good. Next one. Next one we've got. We have the lock duration is halved. Um, this is a great time to point out that what you are witnessing on the stream right now is our bleeding edge build. Our absolute, like we just updated this this morning? Yes, I can't freaking remember. It was very recent. And we plugged these in for kind of like testing to see how effective they were and whatnot. And we actually kind of don't like how long this still takes. So this is actually going to be coming down and it's going to be lock duration is effectively removed. There's going to be a very short timing window, um, but have is still too long. It, we just want the lock duration basically removed. That's what that is going to end up being. Next one we have 20% chance to refund ammo when firing. Very simple, very clean, and also can have some combinations which we'll be talking about in a moment next one up the last three missiles do 300 percent damage the last three missiles so this has 15 missiles for its capacity those last three do 300 percent increased damage this also has some wonderful combination effects, which we will be talking about shortly. And last but not least, one that's specific to mines. Mines are magnetic and will fly towards enemies in a 500 meter radius. Oh my gosh, I love this mod. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. You send them out there and uh, don't worry about the fact that it might not technically make sense from a realistic standpoint. When you see the word magnetic and you're a gamer, you know that that means it's going to go over to something else. And that's why we put that wordage in there. Don't think too much about it from a simulation realism standpoint, or your, your brain's going to get fried. But I tell you what, this effectively increases their effect range. And you just watch and go whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh my, that's, whoo. All right. Um, there are a couple of these mods that can be on other missiles as well as rockets. Um, I just wanted to cover a little bit of that as well uh, before we really get cracked open into all of this. Uh, the plus 30% uh, damage for each second the missile flies. This can also be, this is one of the few ones that can also be on the rockets. Yes, so if you're firing rockets long distance, uh, th this, is, this is wonderful to have. This is absolutely wonderful to have. We've got the critical damage one. This can effectively be like on every single thing except for rockets because firing one poultry rocket that doesn't home in wouldn't feel good. So we left that off the list, okay? So you can't, you don't get an auto single rocket that does three damage. No, we're not, we're not gonna do that. So you can't accidentally roll that and then feel bad. Perfect. Lock duration is halved. If it locks on, this can generate on it. 20% chance to refund ammo when firing. This is also one of those that can in fact be on rockets. And let me tell you what, with how fast you're firing, this pays for itself. It's, it's delightful. You get a high capacity rocket launcher with a 20% chance to refund ammo when firing. Oh my gosh, it's, it's rather glorious. Let me tell you what. All right. Uh, Next up, we've got uh, the last three missiles do 300% damage. This can also be generated on the shield breaker and armor breaker missiles, but that's it. And it might, I would argue that it would probably even be better on the shield breaker and armor breaker missiles because you have a smaller capacity. I think their capacity in general is about eight. So you're getting a massive bang for your buck, literally, <laughs> um, when you're using this effect there. And then this, the mines, this can apply to every single mine type. Every single mine type. That includes standard, uh, the corrosion mines and Weber mines. At this time. At this time. Excellent. So there's a, a huge slew of new properties, new traits that we're going to get to play around with. So let's talk about some of these combinations. Let's talk about some of these combinations. I already see a couple people asking questions because curiosities, we're gonna cover all of it, okay? Like almost every single one, uh, but just kind of also to cut to the chase since I know there's a lot of individuals regarding the bomber like, 
well, how does refunding work? Because it works on energy. How does that, yes. So it basically doesn't use energy if it refunds itself, right? Um, that's how that would work. If it was the, uh, do -do -do -do, which one? If it's this one, it, again, it doesn't use uh, anything. Uh, was there another? There was another one, I feel like. Nope, I think that's it. That's mostly going to apply to the bomber. Now let's look at some fun combinations, okay? So first off, we we have equipped ourselves with these homing missiles. The last three missiles do 300% damage. And when doing critical damage with the primary weapon, there's a 30% chance to automatically fire this weapon without consuming ammo if it is equipped. Also, the lock duration is half. If you're already thinking about this correctly, I'm gonna drain these missiles out intentionally. Now we're on the last three. When this auto fires, its damage is inherently increased by 300%. Yes, and that is working as intended. So if you really want to get the best bang for your buck with this, get a high precision build, slap that missile on, and you're going to be firing free 300% damage increased missiles to your liking. Next up, we also have these corrosion mines. Um, also have the critical damage uh, to auto fire. Um, it also has a 20% chance to refund ammo when firing. Now this one's kind of fun because if I used several corrosion mines and it auto fires, when it auto fires, it actually has a chance to refund that. And remember, it's freely being used. So this combination actually means it generates a free mine for you. If we were at 13 out of 15 mines and we didn't fire it off naturally, it was an auto fire and it like, it refunded ammo, we would then have 14 out of 15 corrosion mines. So you could effectively restock yourself. Yeah, yeah. Fun little combinations there, isn't it? All right, let's keep going. Rockets. I just I just love these rockets. I feel like these are really powerful rockets. 30% uh, damage for each second the missile flies, 20% chance to refund ammo when firing, and 20% chance to disable the target's shield for two seconds with each hit. Basically, this eliminates an opponent's shields and then does a lot of damage to boot. Yeah, this feels good. That feels good. Next up, and last, last but not least, I also wanted some web mines that could be really cheeky. So these, uh, these also generate automatically which I love. This is the, the combination where it can fire automatically and refund itself, as well as being magnetic. So web mines in particular, they don't do a lot of damage, but when you stop your opponents in their tracks and you have something where you need everybody grouped together, this can be a very ideal situation, especially if you're using certain perks or modifiers that do uh, more damage based on the number of conditions your opponent have. You just plop this on your ship, auto fires, it basically adds another stack to whatever, and then you keep on pounding it to your leisure. So lots of different opportunities and ways to do this. Also, because the mines are magnetic and cover that extra 500 meter radius, uh, you can fully expect to cover even like ships flying all over the place. Like it zips on over, we'll be showing this. It feels really good. It feels really, really good. I see a couple more questions about how does this all work with the bombers. Basically, it works exactly as you would expect in the sense that if you are getting a refunded charge, it doesn't spend any energy whatsoever on the bomber. It's a completely free of charge shot. Um, and that's basically it. So just think about like quality, quantities as energy. If you refund, it can actually charge up your energy slightly. Uh, I think it might be hard to uh, combine that effect, but it's still very much there and very valuable should you find the certain build to circulate it. Mm. All right, so now let me look over at the chat, answer some questions. And before magnetic mines cause player death due to detonator drones. I have been experimenting with that and uh, was definitely uh, before the stream went live. It may or may not be why my plating is completely destroyed, but don't you worry about that, okay? It's fun. 
it's fun and interesting and dang it we're happy that we have these new mods uh because through the slew of these six new mods for secondaries in addition to other of the popular ones like a 20 percent chance to disable the target shield for two seconds with each hit you're starting to see a lot of variety and opportunities i'm sure you can you guys are smart so you see how all of these different com combinations are, are coming together so let me just actively show you we've got these homing missiles now i put them all the way down to three so we're going to be getting basically free shots just by having it equipped all we have to do is start hitting our opponent no free missile there that's fine ah there we go and as you can see that missile does a pretty tremendous amount of damage and that half duration lock on you can see how effective it is um, in just getting that lock on super fast. But again, we want that to get just a little bit faster. Oh, here's a good one. We're going to use the pulse laser on the armor so that we get more proc chances. <laughs> so it's completely auto firing this missile that's doing a pretty strong amount of damage. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's so broken. That's doing so much damage. Eh, I mean, some of the combinations you can do with weaponry. Now secondaries actually matter on this front, and we're very pleased with these results. Very pleased. Oh my gosh. So here are our corrosion mines, and again, I think these, yeah, these are magnetic. So here we can, uh, we can go over here to the Proto Scout. You can just kind of watch them. What? They didn't even have to move, okay. All right, sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, they're kind of moving towards where they need to go, but uh, they're they're lacking because I'm being too accurate. Let me try that again. Uh, but you, there actually is like a little visual modifier that shows them zipping over. Here, let's. Uh... Oh man, and look at look at all this ammo that we uh, still have. All right, come on, do the thing. Do the thing. Do it! Come on! Yeah. Alright, you can see, there you go. That one got pulled over and it missed and now it's cycling back around. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That feels good. They weren't quite where I needed them to be and the mines were like, don't care, I got this. Feels pretty nice. Feels pretty nice. So lots of new ways that you can approach the game space just through your secondary mods. I'm already eager to see what you guys will be coming up with once this uh, does go live uh, in the summer. Oh my gosh, that feels so long from now. But uh, rest assured, we are looking into lots of different modifiers at this time. Lots of them. And just trying to figure out What's going to be the best bet to, um, you know, implement and allow you to get super crazy with your builds. A lot of primary weapon builds are already rather explosive, but the secondaries, a lot of people were just pairing it with like a destabilizer missile just to make the primaries even better. But like homing missiles, not really something that a lot of people use. Rockets, eh, I mean, they're cool looking, but still like to really maximize damage, you don't really go there. These mods change that. Actively changing it. Flory asking, okay, yeah, so one more, I'm just gonna do the follow up to that just to make sure everybody's super well aware. I don't understand though, does it now need to be active or just equipped? Like with the mines active without the auto fire, would it still auto fire? So this is a good question. It's fired from your ship, not fired as in like it starts to do its own thing and then explodes, right? So on that front, mines being active out there, they're not going to regenerate once they hit it's when it's fired from the ship okay um otherwise it has to be actively equipped on your ship so between these two both of these regenerate or both of these have a chance to auto fire right if i'm attacking like this and i get a critical hit the corrosion mine will fire off and now 
if I'm attacking like this, exact same thing, because I've cycled over to the homing missile, it would auto fire instead. You don't get them both, you just get the one that's active, the one that's present basically right here. So it's a good question. So we'll make sure that everybody understands that. So fun new ways to explore and experiment with your secondaries. And I'm already looking forward to what you guys do. Uh, Spoonite says, and, and this is a great point and something that we have been testing um, and will probably get a little bit of a change. So I'm gonna read this out loud and then explain. Um, so Spoonite over on Twitch says, if you could get a high, like actually high crit chance with a scatter gun and a gunship, could you potentially uh, Etano Circus missiles? Sort of. So there will likely be a restriction on this auto fire and that restriction simply put will be it can only happen like every 1.5 seconds. So if you found a way to like spam crits super fast, which we will probably likely have a means to be able to do, you will not spam auto missiles as well. You would have to either spam crits for your weaponry, while the restriction here would be like, it only fires off every 1.5 uh, seconds. So you're still getting a pretty strong firing rate of free missiles, let's be honest. However, it's not gonna just like insta stack and you fire 14 missiles all at once if you hit a crit with a scatter gun and you know, every single one somehow critted, right? <laughs> Some people saying brain is melt <laughs> laser head over on YouTube, <laughs> excellent. Are there only two superior catalysts in the game right now? Correct. That is correct. There will be more catalysts added though, for sure. Are these going to be catalysts? Also with a missile proc having it occasionally fire while using your weapons possibly kill you when anti-missile drones are around. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's more than possible for catalysts to add modifiers to weaponry. Uh, we've seen that already based on the mining catalyst, right? It adds three, adds all three of the mining modifiers directly to a weapon. It's possible. Um, there's a lot of balancing that we still are doing around catalysts, but I guess the short answer, um, just to cover our ground is, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that could show up. We have to figure out and we want to figure out what are going to be those optimal level of modifiers that don't take away from the actual searching for loot. Crafting is not meant to replace searching. Searching, we want to be the primary way for you to get the best stuff. Crafting is meant to complement that. So if you wanna tweak it a little bit further, if you wanna take it up to that next level, we want to have those means, but we don't want you to be able to say, take an item that's absolutely worthless and then invest a bajillion things into it through the crafting system and have the ultimate weapon, okay? So that, that is very much by design and why we're going that direction. All right, um, so let's see. Answer, I'll answer a couple more and then we will keep exploring this area. Hang on a second, I missed a comment. We can't drain our ammo on the bomber to three. How is the last three missiles do 300% damage going to work on bombers? Effectively, when you are really low on energy in the bomber, uh, when it's like the last, the last sliver of it, like basically the under 30% or something like that, then you'll start seeing that benefit. That's how that will, uh, that's planned to work. I don't know if that's actually implemented yet, but that has been a point of discussion. So yeah, uh, we do want the bomber to actively take advantage of all of these modifiers as well. If anybody's wondering, it's not like these are meant to compensate for the bomber's super abilities with secondary so all the other ships get something. No, these weapons should work in tandem with any ship, including the bomber. So if your energy is low, it should very much apply that added damage when you are flying the bomber. So good question. Uh, let me see if I missed anything else. I, of course, did, but we are going to keep playing because I'm talking a lot and I want to show you guys stuff. 
I see the same question was asked over on Twitch as well, so I'm glad that we were able to address that one. What about it killing you with missile drones around? Yeah, I mean, you just have to be careful with your weaponry. I mean, okay, so I, this is something that I found particularly interesting. We even adjusted the flak damage, right? As a player, you know that a flak damage triggers when it gets near an opponent. Yes, you know this. You have this knowledge. You understand it, of course. You're firing at enemies far away, it triggers far away and explodes, dealing damage to all the enemies around it. If an opposing missile is directly in your face and you fire a flak at your opponent who's very far away, what do you think is going to happen? If your expectation is the flak shouldn't hit you or the missile and it should go directly to your opponent, I'm sorry you are incorrect. The flak is intentionally designed to flak missiles out of space so that it defends you, but you have to shoot them at range, right? Or you need to be shooting it at a ship at range in order to cover that damage. We are not responsible for you blowing yourself up because you the, use the flak directly in front of you as a splash damage weapon, okay? If you're surrounded by enemies and you're shooting a flak all willy nilly and explodes in your face, I'm sorry, but that's on you. <laughs> like, we even reduce the self damage but you have to understand the weapon in order to maximize its usage. You don't want a weapon blowing up in your face? Don't use a weapon that blows up in your face. You have to use the weapon the way it's intended to maximize its results. With mines that auto lock onto opponents, if you use a mine with an enemy that's directly in front of you, what is your expectation to happen there? Because ours is that you blow your freaking self up. <laughs> <laughs> Be smart about how you use your weaponry, and we go from there. Hopefully that's a good point of clarity for people who somehow didn't understand that. Um, I know that a lot of you do, and thank you for your understanding and capitalizing on these situations with certain weapons being more effective at certain things than others. It's great. All right. So. Now. Let's get back into this. Uh, this location, um, let's just, let's go to the Parasite Mission. Seems way different than using the flak. Um, how many, legit, I legitimately want to know, Bearded Frog, how often do you use mines and have you tried using them at close range? Because sincerely, that's gonna like, I feel like that's gonna answer like so many things. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna start the Parasite 2 mission, but just know if a weapon has splash damage and you use it at close range, it's gonna hurt you. I usually like to chatter a bit. I'm well aware. Although in this instance, she was extremely pressing. The parasite is spreading. To what extent, I cannot tell. I investigated deeper into the matter of the host ship, the Nordborg. In fact, I made contact with someone who worked on the project. The individual, a researcher, wishes to remain anonymous, but has nevertheless shared some of his knowledge with me. He even had an idea why you might not have been affected. Okay, elaborate. Your outdated hive unit offers a degree of protection through its obsolescence. If I had a hand, I would slap you across the face. So my ship is immune? The parasite, following its parasitic nature, was not designed to attack colonial tech. But it is learning. It is trying to find a way in. But more importantly, it seems the parasite you found at the Nordborg was able to imitate human behavior. It communicated with you, is that right? Yes, it did. It was a little cryptic, but at least it could be concise. This level of imitation is very unusual. New strands don't start on that level of adaptation. 
this researcher believed the worst had happened, and the parasite has begun to evolve to imitate life signals. So a simple bioscan would no longer suffice. I don't like where this is going. If he's right, this parasite has spent decades in its cage, honing its skills. It could be what we would call the Alpha Strain. The researcher is bound to know more. Where do I find him? That's the problem. He was attempting to locate the parasite to study its progress when he disappeared. I'll give you his last known location. Okay, sounds good. At the time, he was testing a new scanner configuration, which could potentially expose the parasite. Sounds like the sooner we nip this thing in the bud, the less likely it'll spread. I'll call you when I find the researcher, Pango. If nothing is done, I fear the DMZ could become even more inhospitable to organic life. Excellent. So it's quite the situation we've got on our hands. Uh, let's see, we want to quick repair. Uh, regarding restocking, I actually want to leave the homing missiles uh, completely drained. So we're just going to purchase the corrosion. Mo oh, whoops, I did that completely wrong because I am brilliant. Uh, but that's fine, because we wanted to cycle our weapons anyway. So I'm going to go over to the rockets and these web mines now. These rockets, uh, they get increased damage for every second they fly. So the further away I am, the more damage they will do. I have a chance to refund them, and they have a chance to disable shields. Because the, uh, these are quite rapid fire missiles, eight missiles per second. Um, we have a pretty strong chance to drop the shields of a larger target, uh, making these pretty strong against, say, like a capital ship that had shields. And then our web mines, we're gonna use this kind of in conjunction with our auto firing. That way we don't damage ourselves too badly and also just lock our opponents in place to make it really easy to barrage them with rockets. It's that simple. They stop, I shoot. Goodbye. Nice. So we'll have the web mines equipped until we need to start firing the rockets. Also, oh, I just caught uh, Zerilia joining the stream. Welcome. My goodness. I feel like it's been a really long time since we had you sneak into a stream. Uh, uh, what a pleasure. I also hear there's some uh, some uh, outlaws uh, generating inside of the, the, the Drake system. Mm. Uh, so Deshra asks, any chance on a weapon in the future geared towards, hang on a second. Uh, any chance on a weapon in the future geared towards doing high damage to capital ships, like an anti-matter cruise missile that only bombers or gunships could carry? Um, so one of the design philosophies we've actually approached in Everspace 2 is to not restrict equipment based on what ship you are flying, but rather make certain items more effective on certain ships than others, especially depending on the build that you choose. So through that, um, no, we don't have any plans for those style of restriction. However, it can be far more optimal to use certain secondary weaponry on a bomber versus certain secondary weaponry on a Sentinel, right? It could make more sense for certain primaries on a scout than it does on a striker. You know, uh, and, and it keeps going on like that. So we're designing it with freedom of selection, but the ways, the means to um, optimize those particular builds to get the best bang for your buck for that equipment. Much like you see in these modifiers for the secondaries, which if you're not being smart, could do more harm than good. But if you utilize these features to the best cases, they can be incredibly powerful tools for you to turn the combat around. All right. So, uh, we are heading over to the crash site. Going through Smuggler's back door. We're gonna take out some of these guys. Maybe we'll get a free missile, uh, free mine. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. So now it makes it real easy to shoot them because they're not moving at all. So just a nice friendly little combination there. 
locked them in place. They literally couldn't do anything, so we just barraged them with missiles. Is it time for a stealth bomber passive for hunting capital ships? Oh my goodness. That sounds pretty wild, honestly. Yeah, and you're probably gonna see me do this a lot where I'm using an energy-based weapon on a, like, a shield because I want to get more proc chances because I'm being cruel <laughs> to my opponents. <laughs> Excellent. So let's chill with this music and I'm gonna see some more responses real quick. Is it intended that scout bonus ra weapon range does not apply to secondary weapons? I saw your uh, statements in the Discord, Fens. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure. Um, so that's something that's going to be evaluated. We're going to figure out if it is intended or not, um, and then write that accordingly on its description. Um, but gut feeling is that it's not supposed to. It should only apply to primaries. That being said, with the scout, um, if you're getting a marksman uh, missile that does increase damage for every second that it's out flying. I think it's going to be an incredibly nice compliment, regardless of it getting additional bonuses through the start, the scouts passives or not. All right. Uh, new jump gate noises. Yes, there were new, there's new sounds that were actually added. Um, they're not ready to talk about. <laughs> we are updating some sounds throughout Everspace 2. Uh, it's to my understanding that there are like the sort of grungy sounds of like connecting um, uh, more dangerously to the jump gates that are, uh, they're not like fully stable. So like the smuggler's back door, the Zarkov jump gate, uh, they've seen some wear and tear, so you're gonna hear that noise. So just, just little details like that. Maybe if we're really lucky, I'll show you a weapon that's got new sounds and it, uh, it's really nice. But that was not intended to be talked about or shown today. The researcher we're looking for must be somewhere around here. I have marked the given coordinates for you. There it is. Ooh, I got too close to his mind. Whoa, whoa, hey, stop. I'm here to help. It does not appear as if he is in the humor for pleasant conversation. Stop. Stop shooting. This is a misunderstanding. It's dangerous here. You, you need to leave. Please, are you the researcher working with Pango? I came for your help. I need to know all about the parasite. It's too dangerous. I must insist that you leave. Don't worry. I'm here to help. Let me call our mutual contact to straighten this out, okay? I'm patching you through to Pango now. Ah, uh, I'm glad my colleague Adam found you. Why didn't you answer my calls? I needed to hide. So I shut down my systems, which helped. But I don't need your assistance. Please, leave. Adam is part responsible for the current mess and has an interest in its outcome. Oops. Also, I dare say that he is the better combat pilot. All right. I know another location where you can find more of the entity. Send me the coordinates. I'll have a look. All right, go to Union Border Control now. Finding out more about everything going on. We got our researcher who was still intact, which isn't very common here in the DMZ. Mostly everything's destroyed. Now I think about it, the passive does explicitly say primary, doesn't it? If you're referring to the scout, I don't know if it does. I think it actually just says weapons. I think that's the point of contention. So it, that's, that's, we've discussed it internally, so rest assured, we'll address it. You guys don't need to worry too much about it. 
We'll make sure it fits the feels. Uh, okay, so Deshra, follow up from uh, the response that I had about weapons being geared towards particular ships or like uh, um, restrictions. Uh, does that mean that there's a chance for a secondary that is geared towards doing high damage to a capital ship but would be hard to hit anything else? I mean, I'm not going to say that it's impossible, especially if we're looking towards Everspace 1 as any sign of example, especially uh, in terms of the torpedoes that were available on that front. So um, it's, it's possible. It's possible. At the same time, um, I'll also state that internally we're getting really happy with the damage balance and the combinations of builds where you can focus fire a single target for incredible high damage capabilities. You know, this is done through not only devices, but also through set item bonuses, um, as well as, you know, just general knowledge of using your perks in tandem with one another. And you can like seriously drop uh, an end boss at a high risk area, for example, uh, within seconds, if you've got everything laid out. Um, so to add to that, if we had a secondary that was just entire purpose was to kill, you know, high mark targets like that. It creates new opportunities. Um, it's also doing something that's already capable of being done. So we'll be gentle on our approach through that system. But it is possible. I will say that again. It is possible. Photo mode is super addicting. Yes. Agreed. Already back at it with photo mode. Oh my gosh, just crispy muffin. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Plasma torpedoes confirmed. Look. I want to say that everything in Everspace 1 is coming back into Everspace 2. I would love to say that, but it's simply not a true statement. That being said, we've brought most of it back, and we're not finished with the game yet. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> ah, the tease! Which oh, could undermine my ability to function. Yes, Hive, but you're obsolete, remember? Hive is obsolete. Oh my goodness. All right, we're going to leave those uh, Okar drones uh, alone since we accidentally attacked them. Whoops. All right. Look, some outlaws. The GMB vessel. GMB. Hello, my name is Adam. How are you faring? No response. Although I am registering life signs. Maybe I sounded too much like a salesman. I'll try again. I used to work for GNB myself. I just have a quick question. I am G and B. I work like a drone. Um, are you alright? I am. Can you tell me your name? I I am um, um. Okay, something's wrong with this guy. Let's try that scanner configuration Pango gave us. Careful now. Scanning will have a sound effects added eventually. Whoa, scrap. They didn't like that. Ah. I'll just uh, play with our food here. I almost. Oh, something. Hi, you all right? Yes. I can only presume that the parasite, in its early stage, is not able to infiltrate the ship's systems. And let's hope it stays that way. I'll call our guy and give him the news. Hey, I wanted to give you an update. It looks like the scanner triggers the parasite badly. It attacked me right away, but there was nothing I couldn't handle. I know that the scanner works. For now. I thought you might be more pleased with that bit of news. <laughs> I'm certain that the entity will adapt to the scanner at some point. Then we should deal with it before that happens. Indeed. I have another location for you. I'll send you the coordinates. Sure. I'll have a look. All right. 
So we're gonna fly on through Zarkov in this sweet, sweet music. And we're also gonna swap back. Uh, yeah, we're gonna swap back both of these. This could be fun and interesting. Yeah, destabilizer missiles auto firing. I'm seeing some people talking about. Yeah, no, it can be real fun, real good. There's lots of different combinations that you could use to your advantage through these new modifiers, which is exactly the point of a looter shooter and the itemization. So, very good. I see a couple people asking, both from YouTube and from Twitch, goo guns? So does that mean goo guns coming by? Is that confirmed? Confirming goo gun? Guys, jeez. Goodness gravy, calm down. Maybe. I don't know. There's still room. Could we add it? We could. Will we? Hard to say at this time. At the Nordborg again. This place spooks me out every time. I would say, I would say when you guys are thinking about content from Everspace 1 to Everspace 2, just like in general, I would say be hopeful, but I would not expect. Because I feel like if you're expecting every single thing from Everspace 1 to be incorporated into Everspace 2, you're going to be disappointed. You're straight up going to be disappointed. But I do, got, I sincerely, I want you guys to understand that our intent is to bring as much of that back as possible. Like we want that authentic, rich territory, that space, those combinations that you enjoyed from Everspace 1, even though it was a different formula, right? The roguelike, very different play. We want to bring as much of that back as possible, sincerely. So again, be hopeful, but I would not have the expectation that everything is returning. Okay. There is another uncommon combination of ships. Mm. Okay, let's see if they're real or not. Hello? Anyone home? Home? Am I at home? That's just freaking creepy. Oh my gosh. All right, let's keep going. Okay, let's scan them and be sure about this. Strap. Maybe they're not all done for. We should make sure by scanning a few more of them. post you're distracting me let's keep doing this mission this is a researcher i can't believe i fell for it you did and now there is no escape from this place jump tribes are suppressed you will become one of us
All right, let's go take care of this. I only push my uh, speed button on my mouse. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Target. I don't see any moving oh, ships. That's it. Is it over? Hive, are you there? Hive? System successfully reported. Woo! Glad to hear that voice. Is it really you? Unfortunately, yes. I had hoped to wake up on another assignment. <laughs> yep, that's you, all right. <laughs> Welcome back. What happened? The parasite attempted to infiltrate my systems. As a last resort, I went into hibernation mode. So, how were you able to reboot yourself? I left one receiving end open. The ship's internal communications input device. You followed my voice home? That is almost romantic, Hive. I took the assumption that the parasite would be more focused on attacking the ship's vital systems than the less necessary organic component. But we know the parasite can mimic voices too. How could you be so sure it was really me? There was an element of care to the tone. Proof of emotional empathy, which the parasite is unable to replicate, much less comprehend. Yeah, I'll buy that. I should return to Pango. I'm sure he'll want to talk about this in person. Excellent. Yeah, lots of spoilers. Lots of spoilers. And here we go back. Let's see what I missed while so much was transpiring. Every mission is like a whole TV show episode. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Laser head. That praise. Thank you. I'll be sure to tell our story writers. You like the details and texture of player and enemy ships from Everspace 1 better? Eh, it's fine. To each their own. Yeah, there, there's a lot more detail in Everspace 2 ships, but um, no, we, we quite like how they turned out in Everspace 1, especially. So, yeah. I'm not going to judge you for liking one thing over another. I see him. Love the music? Yeah. Pretty happy with the music, too. And there's still more coming. It's not all done. Uh, Deshra asks a pretty good question here. Once again, Deshra, with the good questions today. Uh, let's just address this one. I think this is, a, this is a really solid question. So the question is, what do you mean everything from the first game may not be in this game? What kind of sequel even is this? Imagine not just replicating the first game in a series with just better graphics. So obviously there's some tongue-in-cheek going on here. Um, but uh, also, 
um, you know, for some individuals, they don't actually understand just like how much of a transformation uh, Everspace 2 has gone through to get to where it's at coming from Everspace 1, which is why I wanted to read this out loud and address it. Everspace 1 as a roguelike in that formula requires certain item combinations and abilities and, and whatnot to be utilized on the fly, right? And we don't want anything to be so overpowered that nothing else matters. However, it could be more useful in those moments where there's like one or two items that can seriously do the job because it's limited to acquire or it's um, not accessible, right? I think that's the biggest thing. You know, in a roguelike, you find an ARC 9000 and you're just like, Yes, I've got I've got a way out just in case things get too chaotic. I can hold on to this or I can use it and store something else for my secondaries, you know, stuff like that. And Everspace 2, there's that huge transformation going from this run-based experience, right? This roguelike where you're meant to die and start over and try again versus now we have this persistent handcrafted world that you're out exploring and getting all the sweet loot, right? The loot has to look different. And it's going to operate in tandem to your build, to your play style, far more because it's lasting and progressive to an open world-esque space, right? Very different from a run-based roguelike. And through that process, that does mean we have to look at what we've done before and say, is this right to exist in this new space that we are cultivating? This is actually why the ARC 9000 is now an ultimate as opposed to a findable secondary. Just imagine if you could have a findable ARC 9000 in Everspace 2, you know, you plug it into your ship and you also have it have the last three ARC 9000s do plus 300% damage, as well as when you do a critical hit, uh, you just automatically fire an ARC. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like little details like that. And then I know some people are like, well, it could be a legendary. Guys, well, it could, it could have been, maybe. But then that's so hard and so inaccessible in this space that it kind of defeats the purpose of the ARC 9000. So instead, lore-wise, the ARC 9000 just simply isn't made anymore. And it was all scooped up from your adventures through Everspace 1. Everybody's grabbing them, re-optimizing them, and incorporated how to create an energy-based shot, the same exact Salvor Industries ARC-9000 from the chassis of a bomber. That's how they brought it back. Bound to it eternally. So yeah, we still are trying to get as many things as possible back, but not everything will. Just keep that in mind. Because the game space is different. Uh, well, I'll save that comment for later. All right, let's go ahead and uh, gather some stuff. <laughs> Cogs churning. What can I get away with saying? No, nope, I better not. Michael's in the stream. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, so we completed. No, we haven't. We need to get over. We need to complete. We need to head over to Penga. Everspace 2 is pretty different. I mean, obviously there's there's some strong similarities, but no, it, it is a different game. Absolutely. I think Everspace 2 is much more appealing to like the space sim enthusiasts um, than Everspace 1 was. Let me tell you what, I'm, I love roguelikes. And so Everspace 1, oh my gosh, it really scratches that itch for me. I love replaying it over and over, especially hardcore mode. Oh my gosh, can I get like a hand emoji of waving if you've completed hardcore mode on Everspace One? Cause oh my gosh, what a delight. I hope there's lots of you out there. It's an absolute blast. Out there, you went 
dark when you closed in on the Nordborg. I destroyed a lot of infested ships. And the researcher, did he help you? Turned out the parasite got to him first. It only revealed itself after it thought it had the upper hand. That is regrettable. I defeated the Alpha strain, though. And there's that. That might be true, but it doesn't mean that the infestation has been eradicated. New outbreaks could resurface over time. They will need to be dealt with by somebody with a proper knowledge of how they work. Yeah, I get it. Me. That somebody is me. Wouldn't it be wiser to inform the Colonial and Okar authorities? They should know what we're dealing with and the threat it poses to the DMZ. Maybe they can even come up with some kind of joint plan. I will send them warnings anonymously, unless you are interested in accumulating more issues into your already compromised existence. No, I would appreciate the discretion. Then it's a done deal. I'm looking forward to our next meeting. It is never boring with you. Sometimes I feel I'd prefer boring. See you around, Panko. Oh my goodness, I made mention of roguelikes and several people are like, Oh, I don't really like roguelikes. And I've been coming off roguelikes. And, eh, that, guys, it's fine. You don't, you don't have to like them. Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's got preferences. It's fine. You know, if you like them, cool. If you don't, cool. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not telling you guys what to like. Just expressing Everspace One's a roguelike. No big deal. You guys. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if you heard that crack, but man, my back feels a lot better. All right. So now that we're done with, uh, at least I think we're, goodness gravy, are we done? Yeah, we're done. We've completed it. It didn't start a new mission chain, which is very good. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we've already done the main missions and everything. So yeah, we can start flying around and doing some other stuff now. Uh, we can do some more fun stuff with our combinations of secondaries. Maybe even find some other ones that have some interesting results. Scorpion missiles, lock duration is half. That's kind of nice, but uh, we're not going to worry about it for now. Otherwise, I think we want to uh, sell a lot of this stuff without really thinking about it. Just because I want to clear, clear out my ship. Just because I can and probably should for the stream. Yeah, we're going to get rid of all these. Actually, we'll hang on to the examples just in case anybody new comes in and wants to know more. So, uh, hello for those. I saw a couple of people saying hello. They're just joining the stream. Uh, big thing that we talked about today were the new modifiers for secondaries. I'm just going to, like, mouse over them so you can kind of see them very briefly. There's uh, six new ones that were added that create some interesting and some cool new combinations at your disposal. Did Eric just confirm Parasite 3? Because it sounded like it could have started something, but didn't. Oh, no, absolutely did not. Nope, 0% confirmation. Mission's definitely done, completed forever. Yeah, didn't didn't imply anything else. <laughs> you guys are fun. All right. Eric, unknown signal, Cito. Yeah, that's the plan. That's, that's what we're going to do, because I have the marker up. I wanted to, to get the marker up. So... We're gonna get some distress calls going. And complete some things. You have four more achievements left. Are you referring to Everspace One? I mean, I would assume so since we haven't, that's a dumb question. Cause we haven't added achievements yet to Everspace Two, which we will be adding achievements. Of course we will. Come on, give me some signals. We gotta find something. Any achievement sneak peek? I hope for one that asks us to complete all terrain assignments. Um, I'm just gonna, I, you know, I hope that we have an achievement 
That's called, this isn't Everspace One. And in order to unlock it, you have to die. <laughs> can we, Michael, can we, can we make sure that happens? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That'd be silly. But no, I mean, we'll have... Uh, I will say that with the design for achievements, what we really like to do is make sure that we don't have any of those like... Oh my gosh, like the annoying grind-heavy achievements. Um, so like, collect 1,000 pure iron. You know, like, why? Um, <laughs> we, we don't want stuff like that. Uh, we recognize that's not exactly the most fun. So, uh, but yeah, well, when we get to achievements, we'll, we'll get to achievements. There'll be a lot to talk about on that front, I'm sure. I'm very confident of it. This was not a distress call, but I don't care. We'll destroy everything anyway. Welcome to Aerospace 2, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Man, these auto firing missiles are so nice. I really like that. I, I think I barely even have to cycle off my pulse laser in this incredibly overabundant energy hog of a sentinel. I just get that added damage. It's nice. If anybody is wondering, um, I like, sincerely, when I say an energy hog, um, I have Relentless, which increases my energy capacity for my weapons by 20% for each installed warfare device. I have three, so that's increasing it by 60%. 60% increase to energy. So if you're wondering like, how is he firing this weapon so long? I did that on purpose. I have stacked the odds to my favor so I can like focus on one firing one weapon because that's just what I want to do in this particular build. Um, and then we also, uh, is there something else? Oh yeah, we upped the energy damage for the Synchro Pulse, which is already a high energy weapon. So it just starts doing crazy amounts of damage. It's fun. It's nice. I like it. I don't have to worry too much about a second primary. And now I just get a free secondary because of these new mods. Feels good. What even is Elec? He is a species known as a Horag. I did say that correctly. And Horags are generally um, sold to slavers as pets. Yeah, they don't exactly have the best uh, course of history in the DMZ. But we can see through Alec himself that Horags can actually be rather competent. Granted, they really like to drink. They're also remarkably friendly, probably why they're generally captured and used as pets. There should be a permanent permadeath difficulty setting. Yeah, last last week somebody asked that same question, Chiron, and my response was very snooty. I basically said, oh yeah, there already is one. You basically, you know, you um, you quit the desktop instead of resuming your game and then you uninstall Everspace 2. But, you know, obviously, um, you know, we, we've seen that request a couple of times. It just looks so different in the space of Everspace 2 than Everspace 1. Um, if you are speed running the content of Everspace 2, just as just as kind of like a point of reference, if we were to do something like Permadeath in Everspace 2, it takes at least eight hours if you are just like going straight through the missions, okay? You probably cut it down if you're like optimizing everything, but still, it takes a healthy amount of time just for the missions that's currently present alone. If we were to add permadeath on top of that, I, I foresee more people getting pissed off losing all of their stuff because, well, I accidentally pushed the button and it's not fair and you need to get my save file somehow and resend it to me more than people actually like feeling good about their progress in a permadeath 
experience. That's just that's just my take on it. Um, I I really don't think we're gonna go that route. It's just not something that we feel would be effective in the environment, uh, in the space that we have uh, created. So yeah, let's find more signals. Hoping for a distress call this time. Any thoughts on mod support? We would love it. That would be amazing. It's just not a priority right now. We got to make a game first before we can mod it. We got to make the game first. But rest assured, a lot of the team members are like, oh man, it would be really cool if we had that. It would be really cool if we had mod support. So, yeah. We'll see. Man, that missile does so much damage. Oh, it feels so good. Let's take out the space. I do not want them all to do more damage. Oh gosh, that's a sniping drone. Let's go take care of him first. I should probably change my devices. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is the best for the Sentinel because it's all very close range stuff. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so we just killed ourselves from an auto firing missile. Ouch. <laughs> oh yeah, permadeath. Oh, no, hang on a second. Well, we gotta, we gotta quit the desktop. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's what I get for not building up too much structure and resistance. Glass cannon mode. Okay, don't use auto firing missiles. I mean, it depends, depends on the situation. My build right now isn't like fully optimized for it, but I'm showing it live because it's new, different and probably exciting to you guys. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing it and maybe we die again. That was a ton of damage though, and I see why we died. All right, let's go after the base itself. Feels really good. All right. Yeah, that base got completely annihilated pretty dang fast. Also, so you guys are aware, we actually very recently changed it to where you can't shoot down your own missiles. So like if you are firing a barrage of rockets, for example, and you are shooting your primary at the same time, and shoot your rockets, they will not explode in your face that way. Very intentional change on our part to help situations like auto firing um, and more stuff to come. So yeah. I like has become a lot more useful in this update. Yeah, I agree. Uh, his AI is a little bit better. Um, <laughs> That was actually pretty close. That was uh, that was almost bad. There we go. Ooh. We gained too much stuff. All right, let's uh let's head over to Prescott for now. Sell our belongings and maybe swap ships. We could swap ships.
Oh, also, uh, this, I just made this observation the other day and I, I hope that you'll all appreciate this. Um, we have been updating the map with uh, like new names and stuff. Um, and I could actually sneak you a, a peek of Drake, which, uh, why not? I just want to zoom in here because I just wanted to make sure that you are all very, very well aware of the fact that Ross has friends. Okay, now my illegal pun is over. Let's head back to the game. Perfect. All right, so we need to head over to the freelancer hangar. You haven't unlocked Alec because you don't want him photobombing you. That is such, that's like 1000 IQ photographer strats right there. I can't even be mad. I can't even be mad with that. Nicely done. Oh yeah, there's also this. I forgot to talk about this. Uh, I think this is Tilo, Tilo's work. Let me actually double check and confirm it. As Tias, Tias, Tias has been doing a lot of work on like making sure these things appear and, and stuff. Um, and this is also uh, not done. Um, I'll even just share with you guys. I'm gonna give you a little snippet of a chat that I had with him recently. Um, and by recently, I mean uh, several hours ago, it was this morning, um, where he was sharing with me how we're still implementing some new indicators within the crafting inventory itself. Uh, so this is not done. So as of right now, you know, when you get something unlocked that's new, you have the same effect that you'd see like within your items, right? Whenever you're picking up something new. So that's all there. For crafting specifically, like this goes away permanently, forever. It's all gone. And there's also probably maybe uh, going to be some other things that make it convenient if you're looking for very specific resources to craft very specific consumables to craft very specific catalysts as well. I can confirm that is something we are working on. Um, and let's see. Anything else to mention that he spoke about? Uh, nothing really crazy, uh, except you'll be able to hot swap armor pretty soon. Okay. <clears throat> Neat. Oh wait, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, look at chips. Let's look at chips. So let's see what we got. We've got this spirit, which... Man, I'm kind of eager to play a, a, a long-range styled scout. We haven't done that in a, quite some time. We need a rail gun. I feel like, like you can't fly a scout in Everspace 2 without a rail gun. I feel like, I feel like. Uh, what else we got, a hornet, oh yeah. Did we fix this yet? Yeah, we fixed it, okay. That's no longer blank. That can actually show up blank. If you see that, don't worry, we got it. It's fixed in our builds. It will be pushed out soonish. Actually, was that hot fixed? Shoot, let me pull up the hotfix note. Did you guys know that we hotfixed the game again recently? Let's pull this up. Let's pull this up. Let's talk about hotfix just briefly. Just briefly. Quick run through. Ah, uh, yeah, the hotfix. So we fixed uh, some crashes. That was the big thing that we did. Um, and then there was a generation thing that was wonky in Zarkov. Okay, so yeah. So we must have fixed that in a, a previous thing. Or we snuck it in with the hotfix. But either way, if you are experiencing that, don't worry. We have legitimately addressed it. And more, of course. Gah, I'm late. Yes, you are. We've covered so many things. The scout will be immune to self death missile and mind bonuses. Uh, maybe it should, if it's played correctly. 
new module ships. Um, there are a couple new modules that were added with the latest update, yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. We've got, a, uh, we're, we're gonna skip Sentinel. Oh, but I do like those mods, but um, Bomber. We could show the Bomber with these new secondaries so you can actively see how it's working. Oh, both of these passives are for Arc 9000, oh my gosh. Arc 9000 damage increases by 2% damage every second after being fired. I feel like, I feel like this is a call to action here. I think we're gonna buy the bomber. Let's do that. We'll show how this works. We'll show how this works. All right, so back to our inventory. We've got, uh, we'll go ahead and put the rockets on here too. You know, see that the uh, items themselves. Oh, this is interesting. I wonder if I'm going to experience a bug here. Did I mention we like literally just added these modifiers? I'm wondering if because the missiles are actually uh, where it's in the last three, if I also get underneath the energy, then I do basically plus 600% damage. That would be an amazing bug. Uh, that also we would find immediately in Squish. Sorry if you're trying to exploit the game. Uh, but yeah, definitely not intended to do, uh, so much added damage. But yeah, I think this is going to be a nice, fun combination here. Um, destabilizer that auto fires. Oh man, we got to put that on. I don't even, I don't even care that it's an uncommon. I just want it. Plus 25 or plus 20, 85% damage dealt. That's huge. That's, that's such a delight. I can't even... That's, that's everything I want. Um, and then we'll also go to the shop and liquidate our assets. I know that we're losing some stuff that we uh, we're using as examples here, but uh, it is time. We are going to just get rid of all of these things. There we go. Awesome. Eric, go to CEDO and do unknown signals there, please. Why? I want to do unknown signals in, uh, you well, I'm trying to do, um, I need to be looking for distress calls within Union. That's an unknown signal. We want distress calls. So let's see if we can find some distress calls. Cyclops still the only bomber? Yes. As of right now, it is the only bomber. Should have changed my passives, actually. I was thinking about it. And my devices, oh my gosh. Look at me not doing what I need to do for my ship. This is actually why it's probably better to store multiple ships and then go to the ship that has all your devices and passives set accordingly. Oh my gosh. RNG for distress calls to unlock fast forward can be a real pain. It can be sometimes. We'll see if we can find something and listen to some killer music in the process. They're actually harder there with Bloodstar. This is true, yeah. Running into like Bloodstar bases is cool. I agree. Where was that one? Unknown? Unknown? Dang it. Let's keep finding one. Bloodstar are the hardest enemies for sure. Redeemers can be kind of tricky too. Redeemers are like the fastest enemy. So if you're using weapons with low velocity, sometimes they can be kind of a pain. Like thermo guns even have a hard time tracking redeemers, for example. So I think it depends on what your loadout is, which ones end, to be up, end up being like harder and easier. What's fast forward? Have I been flying around slow for no reason? Um, so that's a great question. Uh, not necessarily. So basically, whenever you complete these explorer challenges, which I have completed none of them, um, the bonus you get is that with the autopilot active, you can boost to fast forward time while you're traveling through the system itself. Just a nice way to say, hey, I've completed everything in the system. Now I want to be able to move through it faster and just grants that for you. It's pretty nice, pretty nice bonus.
Redeemers don't like railguns, though. That's a good point. Man, if I can't find a distress call here in a little bit, I'm just gonna... Actually, I should probably be flying. Yeah, okay. There we go. Are the Bloodstar a pirate faction kind of thing? Because I'm new to Everspace 2. The Bloodstar are... There's a long history there. Um, the Bloodstar are a very invasive outlaw faction that tried taking over a lot of things um, in the DMZ. Um, and then they start, and so like they are very much warring with GMB, like almost exclusively. Um, so yeah, they, they have an interesting history. I'll say that. Okay, let's see. Let's see how much damage this does. Just curious. Oh yeah, those are definitely getting the 300% damage bonus. We have an exploit right now, and I'm not even mad. Oh my gosh, look at us breaking the game. Oh, that's an anti-missile drone. That's an exploit breaker. Ex it's an exploit exploiter. Wait, blocker blocker. <laughs> So yeah, you're seeing this on, like, we like literally just added some of these modifiers, all of these modifiers for the secondaries. So yeah, I'm gonna exploit this while I can, because it's hilarious. But uh, rest assured, the intentionality for the bomber is that whenever you drop below a thir certain energy threshold, you would receive that modifier's uh, damage. All right. You like where this line of thinking is going? Where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna keep exploiting. <laughs> Look, okay, sometimes exploits are in fact fun. This is truthful. And also why we are very intentional about the modifiers that we're adding. So it feels like you're breaking the game. Now, this one in particular right now is actually breaking the game. So that's gotta be fixed. But rest assured, we want you to, we want you to create some interesting, unique, and powerful combinations that chain together. That's why these modifiers were added. All right, give me a distress call, please. All right, that's fine. But Eric, don't you have a dev console and can just cheat one in? It's defeating the point while I use exploits. <laughs> ah, it's fine. We'll do this for a little bit longer, um, but no big deal. I also kind of like doing this because I get to see what you guys are talking about and answer questions. So hopefully nothing too crazy. What's the lock challenge? Uh, probably Drake is my guess. Can we have a key to unlock it? No. But you can have a more fully completed game in the summer to uh, have access to it. How's that sound? All right, so this is a this is a bit off topic, uh, but I I am you've got my curiosity, Slurine Tetson, about No Man's Sky Outlaw update. You said the flight model still horrible compared to Everspace. It kind of makes me sad, but um, we are very proud of our flight controls in Everspace and Everspace 2. And for those who like were around with the prototype of Everspace 2, like you guys know that the flight controls have improved tremendously for Everspace 2. Like we went back through and we're like, oh no, uh, something's off. Something doesn't feel like there's like a there's like a weird delay sort of thing. And uh, yeah, we we took our time with it. It's gotta feel good. Like it, you're flying almost the entire game, like 99.9% .9 of the game. Um, if it doesn't feel good, then what's the point? You know? But uh, I digress.
do an aileron roll. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, unfortunately, you can't actually roll in super light. Like this is this is as much. I'm actually rolling here. You can see the horizon indicator. You can see the horizon indicator. That's how much you can roll in super light. Can't do more than that. Like I could go, I could go upside down and kind of get a, an added roll, but then it straightens up. All right, I'm I'm getting bored. I'm sure you guys are too. Um, ask some questions. We'll keep this going. And then in a little bit, we're gonna bounce over to Michael Selects. I'll make sure you guys are getting the information that you want and looking at the visuals that you'd like. You guys always know how to make the controls great. Most other devs in the genre don't. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for the praise. That's a very kind thing to say. Uh, we, yeah, we are, we are pretty happy with how it's turned out. That's for sure. That is for sure. Hey, it's a distress call. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys are like kind of wondering about the control of Everspace 2, you're curious, um, maybe how it feels in comparison to Everspace 1. Maybe you've played Everspace 1 and you want to know. Um, yeah, so totally, uh, Everspace 2 has a demo completely for free and you can like download it right now as I'm completely exploiting this game. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is way too easy. Look at this absurd amount of damage from our exploit. I'm not even, I'm not even mad. That will be changed so everybody is aware that I'm still gonna use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, let's get some resources. Absolutely do a tremendous amount of damage to these resources. Oh yeah, that's, that's nice. It's completely crushing it. <laughs> oh, Kaden asks, how's the Rockfish team doing today? So it's actually, um... Actually, I'll let I'll let Michael explain things if, if he wants. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that a lot of our team members are feeling pretty good and uh, taking some nice, uh, do, just doing nice things, hanging out with family, having events, perhaps. I don't know. It's good. The another person asked about Arc Nine Thousand Mining. Goodness gravy. Guys, if you're spinning an Arc 9000 on mining, you're doing it wrong. We don't we don't want to implement it into the game because we don't even want you to try. Don't do it. <laughs> Y'all are nuts. Unknown signal, all right. Eric, a couple streams ago, you said Rockfish staff dies now and then and very hard. I accepted the challenge and went through the game Sentinel very hard missions only, no dying. Too easy? I know this is gonna be a surprise to you, Fins, but not everybody is you. Uh, and everybody plays at a different pace, through a different range, according to their play styles. If it was too easy for you, that's great. I'm glad, I'm, I hope that you enjoyed the run. And if you have feedback for that, please let us know on the forums. That would be fantastic. Thank you. If you, uh, oh, I see a question about, uh, here, I gotta scroll up. Could you guys add the ability to load into the next area while changing your loadout up? If not, why not? The, there's actually, the short answer is, for technical reasons, we can't, unfortunately. We would love to, um, you know, seamless loading stream, streams, you know, it's all like, like th that would be amazing. Uh, we just simply can't. It's it's unfortunately not available for us based on how assets are loaded and, and all that type of stuff. But we are still optimizing how that process is loaded. So hopefully it will get less and less and less 
um, you know, which also kind of depends on your own service system. But uh, that is, uh, you know, that's something we're trying to make better. Uh, hang on one more second. Is there any reference or connection about the blood star to the blood star from Galaxy? Oh, oh my gosh. Um, maybe. <laughs> Look, it's not, guys. Should have read that question before I read it out loud. That's on me. But let's just address this. Yes, we did make the Galaxy on Fire franchise. Uh, the, those, like all of us, we are now, uh, we reside within Rockfish Games and we've moved away from mobile and are working on PC console market. We do not have the IP to anything related to Galaxy on Fire anymore. It's not, it's not ours, it's not our property, all right? Our property is entirely Everspace 2. Because we've built up so much from our history and we have our own little references and our unique twists on things, we might acknowledge work that we've done in the past. I cannot speak to it uh, from a legal perspective, however, since uh, we literally can't. So from a stamp, that standpoint, no 100% that Bloodstar is an entirely new and original idea that we've incorporated to Everspace 2. Excellent. Excellent. All right, one more question and then we're gonna hopefully run into something else. Eric doesn't dance anymore. Oh my gosh, I haven't been dancing. I've been looking at questions. You're right. This is a problem. See, that's the problem right there. As I get so into it, I close my eyes and I can't see your questions. talking about i will be able to show you what this fast forward looks like oh my gosh oh my goodness We're under fire. let's exploit these missiles one more time so that when hans christian does in fact watch the stream he face palms and says eric you fool wonderful oh. <laughs> three missiles almost took out that ravager oh my gosh oh yeah no definitely a bug definitely an exploit guys so again that's not going to uh that's not going to stay on your bombers nay i say to thee you're not even going to see it unfortunately because we'll have it patched out before it drops but uh excellent so yeah so now we have this outlaw wait what wait, wait, wait. union explorer so now we have this union explorer that's basically done all you have to do is get very close to the sun and then we're going to unlock the means to fast travel Super easy. Super easy. Super duper easy. We need to go kayaking and fish. What's kayaking? Woo! All right, so now we've mastered this. Uh, we get 10% uh, discount on all equipment items at the Flying Duchess and XP bonus, as well as the ability, hang on, I have to find a target, as well as the ability for fast forwarding. And you go a lot faster. I'll, I'll just leave that alone because it's a lot faster. Excellent. Bearded Frog says, don't forget your promises on beatboxing and doing Michael Selects properly. Oh my gosh. I, did I promise beatboxing? Oh goodness, gravy. Guys, why do you, why do you like that? I'm bad at it. The stream's supposed to include good things that are fun. My beatboxing is bleh. Y'all crazy, but I do love you. You're a great community. It's fun just hanging out with you. I'm glad you're here to just chill. It's it's good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save this. 
Excellent, because now it's time to actually transition over to those Michael Selects. We got 20 ripe minutes left in the stream to address these, uh, which I'm excited about. So should you. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, actually, you know, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick breather. We're gonna take a quick breather. So let's go ahead and go to the weight stream. And uh, yeah, so if you guys need to get up and stretch, uh, you know, all that type of stuff, you go do that. I'm gonna just uh, take a quick breather. I'll be right back. And uh, yeah, cool. I have returned. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Grabbing one other thing that I'm gonna need when we're talking about things. Oh my goodness. All this planning and preparation, it's just it's nuts. It's nuts! Alright. Here we are. Oh, we're back. Excellent. Let me uh, full screen this bad boy. So we're going to go through the rest of those Michael selects, at least as many of them as possible. And uh, Michael was so kind to provide very specific messages for each one of these. So as we're going through these selects, I will tell you who took the shot and give you what Michael directly had to say about them, why he feels that they uh, do what they are doing. All right. Very, very good. All right. Let's make sure we're not missing anything else from the quick stretch break. Woo! I think we're good to go. All right, so this first one comes from Chemical Bro. That probably sounds familiar. He's also in the Discord. He creates a lot of the stickers. Uh, this is actually, I think, one of the stickers themselves. Um, now, uh, just so you're aware, when Michael goes through and selects, he selects the images that are uploaded to Steam directly. I think he can also pull from the Discord, but he does primarily look through there. He sees what a lot of other people are enjoying, and then he finds the ones that he does truly think uh, deserve powerful recognition. So Chemical Bros, this is titled In Your Face, uh, and this is what Michael has to say for it. He says, the Sentinel in your face, wonderful center perspective and massive FOV with great details of the twin auto cannons, uh, the ultimate threat in this picture, but also somewhat majestic with the huge planet in the background. Pure domination. Absolutely. Yeah, the the um, field of view is quite remarkable with how large those guns look. Very imposing. You don't want to mess around with this thing. And um, I'm personally a fan of like this little yellow ribbon. If it was red, I mean, I'd be getting some Cylon vibes, but still like, I, I love how imposing just the front of the ship looks itself too. Like it's, it doesn't, it doesn't even seem like it's looking at you. It's just ready to just shred through something. Absolutely fantastic. Next one up we've got from Dark Chaos. They also post a lot on the Discord and uh, they have these very beautiful widescreen shots of the different locales. And this one comes from Aethor. Uh, it's the title of this is called Aethor. Michael says, I love this screenshot, not only because of the, 
of the beautiful warm colors as a counterpiece to the cold darkness of space, but also because there's so much visual storytelling. This is also something that we talked about the last time we did Michael Selects. If there's a story within the imagery, that can, it can be such a powerful, moving experience. The skeleton makes you wonder what happened here, and the holes in the ground are a visual tell that there is more to discover. The tilted ring planets with its massive moon just adds another level of surrealism to the scene. Pure art, yeah, very much so, very much so. So great shot, Dark Chaos, keep it coming. And speaking of keep it coming, here's another one from Dark Chaos once again. This one's simply called Union. This shot could be concept right out of the Everspace 2 art book. Yes, we will have a printed, probably even a limited version at full release. The color and lighting is excellent. Lots of dynamic dynamics from deep space back all the way to bright white at the center of the sun. This wide angle shot also provides a great sense of depth and scale with lots of new details to discover even when looking at it several times. Perfect wallpaper material, absolutely. Yeah, it's great because like you just keep looking at this and you discover something new every time. Very much love this comes together so tightly. So great job, Dark Chaos. Keep it coming. I said that twice because there's another one from Dark Chaos. This one comes out of super light. It's a super light shot, I think, probably. Anyway, the description is sometimes less is more. This wallpaper shot is a great introduction to Zarkov with a lot of foreshadowing that this star system is much different to Cedo and Union because of the massive vortex rotating around the system's star. It's also less colorful than the previous Union wallpaper shot, making it great contrast with its predominantly brown and murky appearance. Much more mystery is coming out of Zarkov as it should be. This was intentionally designed as such and it's being captured really well on that front. Next up, we've got It's YFP. It's YFP. They've captured a lot of beautiful shots as well. Uh, and if you go over to Steam, you can like follow certain people and their shots. And oh my gosh, this is, this is one to do it. Not that Dark Chaos wasn't. He is too. Shoot, everybody on this list you need to keep your eyes open for. Uh, Cause like, I mean, it's a asteroid cluster. No open space game with lots of asteroids scattered across the scene while a small nimble space fighter jet is carefully trying to make its way through the hazardous zone. Again, another great example of scale and depth with lots of things to discover, especially in the background. For an art book contender, I would tweak dials of color saturation and brightness levels a bit, but I'd leave that to Marco, our lead artist, who's an, an order of magnitude better Yes, it's true. Marco does have an eye for art. He also does a lot of development, too, so you guys are aware. Um, but yeah, bringing this one to fruition, like, through all of those details once again, your eyes just wander and wonder through every bit of this. And that scale, oh, mm, it's so nice. It's so nice. I see a couple of people talking about um, the visualizations about the cockpits. Uh, I just want to bounce over to that real briefly because we actually had we, we had a discussion in the Discord very recently about cockpits. Somebody somebody had said that um, we said there's not going to be any cockpit customization or something like that. Uh, that's that's actually incorrect. Um, I just want to clarify that. So um, we posted back in 2019. There's a vlog post out of October, uh, and we actually showed blockouts for different cockpit interiors. Uh, they're far from done. They're just blockouts. Um, but we still have the intention of adding those in. So if any of you guys are wondering, like, um, you know, maybe I haven't spoken about it. That's only because it hasn't been a priority. But I have absolutely told you guys, and it still stands true, that there's going to be even more ship customization in the future. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's not just, oh, we're adding more wings. Because you know that's coming. I'm talking more than what you know is already coming. Oh my gosh. It's not gonna be crazy more. It's gonna be more, but I think you guys are going to really appreciate the level of detail, the quality that we allow you to go in and shape and make your vessel into truly what you want it to be. 
All right. So now that we're done with that little tangent, <laughs> let's go to the next Michael Select. It's another one from It's YFP, and this one's called Crystal Cave. Also, I just noticed he has these little signatures, so that's also important to note. He probably does adjust these lightly with some sort of, um, you know, photo editor. It's possible. But a lot of these, when we're pulling these, they are almost 100% natural to the game space, um, at least in the 90 percentile. So, all right. This one, Michael says, even though there's not much, too much to see on this wallpaper shot, you can tell that it's YFP is a pro photographer with a sharp eye for the perfect scene and fantastic details. Also, it's telling a story. The predominant ice cold blue color and harsh light sends a, sends a shiver down your spine while you imagine being in that little vessel exploring this massive crystal cave. Minor touches on color saturation and gamma correction to make it pop a bit more and bam, another excellent Everspace 2 wallpaper contender. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and oh man, I, I I feel like a big theme that's going through every single one of these happens to be scale. And a lot of you guys who share your shots on Discord, take note of that. You know, adding a little depth of field to like highlight some impressive details inside of your customized ships can go a long way. Zooming out just a little bit further to capture the scenery while you have these very tiny little bite-sized ships flying around it can be very transformative. Utilize the tools that we give you in that photo mode and uh, go crazy and have fun. And you guys are, I don't even know why I'm like saying that like you haven't yet, but uh, man, it's just, it's so impressive when it all comes together and uh, feels good, feels good. This is another less is more uh, style. This is from It's YFP as well. This one's called Madcap, simply put. Well, not much going on here, you might think. Well, that's why I like this shot. <clears throat> I'm, I'm Michael. <clears throat> the predominant visual is that of cold, dark, and empty space, but it's disrupted by a madcap patrolling through its territory, demonstrating an immense threat to all pilots who had to deal with the enemy type, leaving an unpleasant surprise after defeating. Again, blue and orange engine trails are the best complementary color scheme to the human eye and it gets, and it even matches the blue plasma fields in the background. I hope plasma fields will have a comeback in Everspace 2. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Michael. Oh my gosh. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, it's all coming together. You really want Rockfish merch is the first thing I see when I look over to the chats. Man, actually, uh, Michael and I, we, we had a discussion about Rockfish merch recently. So uh, who knows? Who knows? I know that it's definitely something we've talked about in the past, but it's just while we're developing and like, we're just a group of developers. Let's be, let's be clear about that. Like we, we all have a, a focal point at the game, right? It's all on the game. So merchandise, yeah, that does sound really cool. I can't, uh, I can't guarantee that's gonna happen or not, right? I wanna be honest. Man, it would be freaking dope. All right, this next one comes out of It's YFP, the Okar Squadron. Those are specifically Okar Interceptors. You can tell because of the way they are. <clears throat> Michael says, this wallpaper shot could be right out of a military ad to sell you Okar spaceships and get alien pilots enlisted to the Okar fleet. Slap some strong message and bold letters onto it and broadcast across the entire DMZ. Great dynamic captured in one frame, which you would also make for a great hero shot of a blockbuster space movie. Everspace spin off into other media would be dope, wouldn't it? Dot, dot, dot. My goodness, Michael, the tease. Also, Michael, just for clarity's sake, um, uh, pertaining to the lore, the hierarchies of uh, the Okar, uh, they actually wouldn't want other individuals, non-Okar especially, to join their forces. Uh, just, it doesn't work like that. Um, <laughs> but I do agree, it's like a, a propaganda sort of ad with, J join now, I definitely see that. Uh, but Okar would never do that. No, it's not, that's not their style, it's not their way. <laughs> so, just making sure you know, Michael, no big deal. Just, uh, just, a, just a heads up. Uh, what's that, oh, I got a private message. What's that going on? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, next up, we've got another one from It's YFP. 
This one is simply called Orange. Named after the delicious treat right in the middle of the screen. Beautiful. Space Orange. This would be my title suggestion. If this was a piece of sci-fi concept art, you print out and hang on your wall in your place, at your place. No color or light correction needed. Perfect as is. Beautiful. Done. And I agree, honestly, I would, I would love to take so many of your guys' screenshots that you've posted and just, I mean, it have to be set up in a way where it's not like overwhelming, but like, oh gosh, some of these are just, they're, they're fan phenomenal. They're just phenomenal. I just like sit and stare in my state of peace and just like let my mind wander, just looking off into the abyss like this. Oh my gosh, what a delight. What a delight. Michael says, thanks, appreciate the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness goodness gravy no every, everything that michael said on that front though that okra shot in particular uh i definitely understand your vibes that you get uh and i completely agree just having some fun <clears throat> all right this next one another one from it's yfp helaman's wound oh my gosh Marco, our lead artist, has worked on this location several weeks alone to make it irresistible for not taking a screenshot and share it on the internet. Mission accomplished. There's so much drama and momentum of planetary scale and of a cataclysmic event frozen in time captured in its unreal. Pun intended. There are tons of Palemon wound on Steam and its YFP knows how to stage it perfectly. He truly does. Yeah, and there's there's been a lot of work done to Palemon's Moon. It's if you guys have been around since the early stages of early access, you even know that because the planet changed entirely. Uh, we're very happy with its results. Oh my goodness. All coming together. Everspace real-time strategy game, says Jay Narl. Oh my goodness. Just uh I don't know, just mod StarCraft. <laughs> That'll do it. Oh my gosh. All right, this next one comes from Vincent, a new photographer. One that should give, I even mentioned this, um, you know, shots from like the opening segments of the game for some, some silly reason, even though it's not even that dated per se like it gives me nostalgia like i get this feeling of like oh my gosh i remember when like i don't and that's this one's immediately doing that to me already so let's see what michael has to say about this one it's called cold space from vincent probably one of the most space sim style shots we get in the michael selects just a white dwarf as the system's center star myriads of others in the many light years distance within a high-tech spaceship fly by in front of a massive planet without signs of any civilization. Opening scene of a new chapter of a new space opera, maybe? Another fantastic less is more space shot. And I couldn't agree more. So good. So good. Would you consider uh, talking to Steel Series regarding our Space 2 themed custom speaker plates for the uh, Arctis headset? That is incredibly specific Excelsior. What I will say is that I know um, that, uh, I, I know Steel Series. I, I love the stuff that they do. Actually, I think I even, hang on a second. I think I actually have, let me just, for a reference point for other people wondering. Uh, this is Steel Series? No, that's, that's this plate. Dang it. Uh, do I have a Steel, do I have a Steel Series? I feel like I do. All right, maybe maybe I can't give it maybe I can't give it an example. Uh, <clears throat> well, that was a fail, but um, rest assured, no, we uh, we know what you're talking about. Um, we think that stuff like that would be really cool. Um, we just have to figure out we have to figure that out, right? Right now, the focal point is making the game, and then we'll get to potentially get. I need to say that because it's sincerely, I can't make any guarantees. Potentially get to marketing stuff in the future. So, all right. Cool. Next up is another shot from Vincent, and this is just simply called Cold Space 2. That's right. Again, it's that nostalgia sort of vibing territory. It's, it's wonderful. It's so wonderful. Um, so uh, the description here, Michael says, 
harsh light on an asteroid is probably not getting any better than in this shot. From pitch black craters over 128 bit of grayscale dusty surfaces to the perfect 256, 256, 256 white spectacular metal surface of a mining facility reflecting the cold light of the near by sun without any atmosphere, color refraction while casually sitting on a huge asteroid waiting for a visitor to arrive. Woo! That was a beefy long sentence. Hopefully they bring some new mining equipment. Absolutely. Yeah, and again, it's, it's man, I don't even, it's, it's crazy how nostalgic this feels to me. Uh, but you know, just knowing, you know exactly where this is. This is like right when you're dropped into mission number one after the tutorial, go, you hit the gas, blazing all of your shots at your opponents it is pretty stinking awesome so uh yeah we got one last shot from the michael selects and then michael's gonna have to get some more and we'll have to do that some other time uh but this last one comes from whiskey dancer we also did cover several from whiskey dancer last week if i'm not mistaken i think we covered like three or four maybe um so this is the last one and this one is simply called Whiskey Dancer Goes Miami Vice Style. That's right. Uh, and Michael has a very clean, very short description of this one. And it's simply another great spaceship money shot with blazing guns and massive music flashes, muzzle flashes from Whiskey Dancer. This time full Miami Vice Style, Crockett and Tubbs would approve. Yea, verily, I say to thee. And this is utilizing that fantastic use of depth of field. So you have the entire focal point on the ship itself, beautiful colors, highlighted by the muzzle flashes. It just, man, I love how it all comes together. Uh, somebody asked, does Eric have a new hairstyle? I just got a haircut, that's all. I just got a haircut. I think my hairstyle is still the same. I don't think I changed the style. It's just getting along. Oh my gosh, Peter Frog, like every five seconds. Don't forget beatboxing. Goodness gravy. You guys are nuts. It is after time for how long the stream is, is generally meant to go on. Um, so technically that means I'm off the clock so I could do whatever I want. <laughs> Michael's like, um, uh, wait a second. That's not how this works. <laughs> oh my gosh. But guys, no, sincerely, you have all been wonderful for hanging out today and just having a blast. Um, it's always such a pleasure to be able to show you what it is that we're working on and also answer your questions as they come up. Now, we talked about a lot of stuff today. We showed a lot of stuff, you know, even with six different modules for the secondaries, that's going to add a lot of distinct replayability, replayability, uh, randomization within your secondaries, which I guess in turn adds to replayability, but, but I digress. Um, to optimize builds, you know, and go in those directions that you desire. Also note that all of the figures, all of the numbers of what you have seen may change. Like when I say we just implemented this, I'm talking it hasn't even received official balancing passes yet. So we could see some adjustments on that front in the future. But as of right now, we very much enjoy how these are incorporated into the environment of Everspace 2 and how they can be utilized um, and we'll also be checking on little details and stuff of like auto firing, blowing yourself up, for example, because I've seen that pointed out a couple times in the stream and it even happened once. So yeah, we'll be checking stuff like that. All right. Um, is there anything else? Am I missing anything? I think that's everything. Right? <laughs> I think, I think we're good. Um, so yeah, if I didn't answer any of your questions. If I happen to miss it because, you know, I address a lot of different things during the course of the streams, um, I do highly encourage you guys to head on over to the Discord, which is right there. Oh, it's leaving. It's .gg slash Rockfish Games. Um, and also by venturing forth and following us on an assortment of other social platforms where you can get all the information as soon as possible. And in regards to the whole question thing, that was the whole point of me going over here. Uh, if you have questions that I didn't answer, Discord has an entire channel, an entire channel for you to go in there and ask us questions. Um, I always do encourage you before doing that to use the search feature to see if it's already been answered. Of course, we do try to keep that a question answer format only. If you want a discussion, leave that for another channel like the gameplay or early access channels. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I think, uh, 
I think that's all I got today. So, um, yeah. Don't stop being awesome because you've been incredibly awesome. And I have been incredibly Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for all things Everspace 2. I am your guide. I am your servant through this entire process, through these community streams. And sincerely, thank you for being here. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your discussion points. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for just being you. Mwah. You are beautiful. Don't change. I'll see you next week. Toodles! Hey, <laughs> I'm back. And technically this is live. It's not pre-recorded nonsense. However, I do look slightly cooler wearing these aviators. At least I'm told, so I'm sticking to it. Also wanted to remind you that there is the free demo available right the heck now that's been updated with all of the spring update overhauling. So if you haven't had a bite of it at all, you can absolutely dive into Steam, download it right now, and start testing it out. And if that's not enough, also note, if you are craving more and want to dive into the game, it's actually the best time to do so because the price point of Everspace 2 will increase when we hit its 1.0 release in 2023. That's quarter one, 2023. Um, I'm going to just, you know, put that out there. And uh, yeah, if you don't, want to spend all that money and you're still kind of like, I'm not sure about this, wish list us because that helps you know when we do go on sales, we've been up to 20% off, 20% off Everspace 2, not even a completed product. We're already selling on sale every now and then. If you want to know, wish list us, it helps us, it helps you so we can all have wonderfulness. Oh my goodness. Guys, you keep, you keep asking for beatboxing. Let me tell you what, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna tell you what, listen, all right, let's, let's have a heart to heart. I promise I will beatbox next time and we'll make it fun, okay? I'll have, it'll, there will be, have a little section specifically for that. But today, my voice is a little raspy, I'm gonna pass, but I am promising, I'm guaranteeing you next time, you're asking for it and I love you all, we'll do it next time, okay? Is that fair? Is that fair? Is that good? I'm seeing some hearts, clip it so he remembers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, sincerely guys, wish list helps us a ton. It helps you get the best bang for your buck if you're waiting for that. And by all means, if you want to wait until the 1.0 release drops, that's totally fair. We totally understand. We thank you for your support. Even if it's telling other people about us, it goes a long ways. All right. I've been blabbing way too long, holy crap. Uh, I gotta go, uh, and so do you, cause you have a wonderful weekend to experience. Go enjoy the weather, your family, eat some food, you know, all those fun things. It should be great. And I'll leave you with a happy Easter, all right. Toodles.